Hi everyone, welcome back to Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. Uh, we have SD Elias here today as the co-host. She is uh, the newest face of Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. I am? Oh. Uh, welcome uh, her to the uh, to the uh, show, and if you see her out, uh, say hello and tell her what a great job she did. Uh, today we have uh, Michael Sana of Sana Detroit. Uh, hey Michael, how's it going? How are you guys? Thank you for having me. Great. Appreciate you. Let's, uh, let's get started by uh, just telling us your story. Yeah. So, Sana Detroit is basically a, uh, we're kind of this Detroit streetwear culture brand that kind of brings, you know, we tell an athlete's story through art in kind of wearable fashion. I think uh, nowadays, especially going forward with how Detroit sports has been, mm -hmm. we've kind of mm -hmm. had this lack of like fashion sense in the city and this kind of like loss of drive for like our sports now. So I think it's it's something where we can, as you know, Detroit culture can kind of bring, um, you know, our history and our, our passion for all of our teams into like yeah. Detroit streetwear. Yeah. yeah, I think we lost the the bandwagon fan in Detroit <laughs> and, and it's just the passionate sure. fans Absolutely. that uh, stuck with the teams through the low times because it's been low times for I mean every single franchise for, for a long time and it yeah. seems like it's coming back up and maybe you're uh you're gonna catch fire at the perfect time yeah it's along fun. with the franchises yeah right absolutely yeah so uh what else about uh how you started what, what about the grind and the uh, beginning and where it's going yeah so i started it back in january of last year and um we've kind of had this you know quick like just burst of success with all these um um, these athletes and stuff. It actually started right in the Keldean community. Mm -hmm. I remember selling the first T-shirt. It was the Steve Eiserman piece uh, nice. at the CHL, the, the Keldean Hockey League. Okay. I offered it to a few people in the locker rooms, and it was something like, uh, "Oh, this is sweet. Let me get a few of them. Let me get a few of them." So definitely owe a lot of it to like the whole community because they've been so supportive over everything. Do you know who bought the first one? I think it was when I brought it in. So I only made like 13, the first one. I just made it for fun. I started okay. out. I was should like, have made 19. Though. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't have no intent of selling anything. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of, you know, I really had a passion for, for fashion design and for, you know, graphic tees and streetwear culture. So I spent like three months before even January to like look and source the perfect blank, like make the perfect t-shirt and the perfect hoodie. So cool. um, and I made only 13 of them. I made one for me, one for my dad, a couple for the family. Nice. And then I had like, three or four left, so I brought it into our locker room. I think Chris George and Larry Cusa were like the first two people okay. to, to even like take take interest in it. They, you know, just gave gave, gave some cash, brought them two hoodies, and that was it. Didn't even have any any uh, intent of selling them. And yeah, I went to, uh, the following week, I went on vacation, I started posting it, mm -hmm. and we sold like 23, 23 units, like our first ever drop and one of the units was like Steve Eisenman's daughter they bought like five hoodies what? yeah that's, so that's cool. amazing so I was sitting there I was like okay I just see the last name Eisenman are you kidding me yeah and oh then my god I saw that and I didn't know if we were gonna get like in trouble because I was eating Steve Eisenman I was like I'm not I'm just doing this for fun yeah and then two weeks later we released it again we sold 50 and then it came out the new design the Ben Wallace and then it took us all the way kind of up to like the Cade Cunningham period where you know we drafted the first round pick yeah made a t-shirt in under 24 hours like we weren't even expected we had a whole other thing lined up and then they picked kate cunningham for the uh for the draft mm. released it sent him a, a whole so you had box. made the kate cunningham shirt before yeah he was even drafted by the pistons yeah, yeah. really smart for it was for <laughs> it was kind of like a hit or miss but it was um <clears throat> if they didn't take him it was like one of those things like yeah. it was like it, they should like a <clears throat> percent thing but wow Right. Yeah. We have to say, I feel like you've blown up the past. You've only been doing it for like a year and a half. Yeah. Like I feel yeah. like I've seen so much of your stuff and it's like blown up. It's so popular. Like Thank what you. really inspired you? Where were you like in your career where you were like, I want to start creating clothing? Right. So it kind of stems a little bit from the past, right? So my dad and my, my family, we own soccer retail stores. Oh, fun. So I've always had the passion. I was in the back always doing the graphics for everybody, like customizing jerseys, creating kits for, for, for local teams. It totally makes sense. So I was yeah. always doing the spirit wear and, and, and stuff. And mm -hmm. then I took up photography in freshman year of high school, I took a class, did video editing for rappers when I was younger. Oh my gosh. And then that's kind of like where it stemmed. I've always had this idea of like, hey, I want to start a business. And I've always loved the idea of a clothing brand. 
Yeah, and it's I feel like it really like caught fire quickly. I mean, you said yeah, Steve Eisenman was your first order, <laughs> one of your first orders. It was fun, yeah. That's it's, a major. It's definitely been a journey going forward with that, and you know, they owe it all to a lot of people. So it's really fun to yeah. see it all. But all. I feel like everything leading up to it, like you worked in like sports. Yeah. You worked in like creating graphics. You said you did like video editing. You worked with did you say like celebrities or yeah, somewhat? like some rappers. We did like yeah. Smoke Perp. Um, uh, Lil Skies, yes, those were like the two bigger names that we did kind of like some video editing rappers for. And then we did some like custom videos for some people on the Red Wings. It was just like little gigs here and there and never any pay. Just like, hey, like, can I do a video for you? Like, just to get the yeah. portfolio built and get your kind of name out there a little bit. So you were like really inspired. Yeah, like I loved doing it. I love, I guess my biggest thing is not like, I like making t-shirts, this, that. I just love creating. I think I being like a creator that. and kind of like content creation is like my biggest yeah. asset. Like I take pride in the marketing. All the marketing you see on the site, all the visual editing, everything that's all done through like by hand by me. Yeah, it's cool. That. I feel you know. before the show we talked about, first of all, it's my first interview. So I'm really proud because I studied fashion at Wayne State. So yeah. I like totally awesome. love what you're saying about creating. Like I love, I did a little line when I was 18 before you know. Instagram. So I missed the mark, but um, but yeah, I absolutely. It's never too late. I'm it's gonna, fun. It's get just back a really, into it. I know. <laughs> Wait, Anthony, I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's our uh, that looks familiar. That's yeah. our purgatory tee. It's just designed after just a straight straight Detroit bone. It's just that hanging skeleton is actually like our secondary logo. Okay. So it's like our uh, it's kind of like our signature now. Wait, I have to ask since I just mentioned like studying fashion. Did you study any like design, pattern making, sewing, like anything? I didn't. So everything I've known is just kind of more self taught. I I think like like YouTube is basically an online college like you can yeah. learn I learned really everything is. through YouTube I learned Photoshop Illustrator you know how to edit videos all through just YouTube like how to make tech packs designing designing was more like inspired from other creators like one of my first ever designer shirt that I ever bought was an off-white shirt like nice. I was obsessed with it like yeah. six years ago and I was like that's the culture I want to be around what that. is that? Off white. Off white. Yeah. It's like, we gotta get that? Anthony an off white. Yeah. <laughs> it says off, like O F F. Right yeah, it's four hundred and fifty dollar t shirt <laughs> yeah. for no reason. Maybe it's he like, can borrow yeah. it. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I'm gonna knock some of them off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Wait, so um tell us because I know this industry, like what were your biggest challenges up front? I guess the no matter how hard it is starting a clothing brand in like today's day and age because it's so saturated is probably one of the hardest challenges that you can even think of like that's one of the hardest businesses mm -hmm. it's it's hard to adapt and kind of build a culture nowadays with this oh, but yeah. um i think we took the initiative of kind of not building a brand but we kind of built this community like when we do our pop-ups we open up at 10, but there's people sending us Snapchats that they're in line at like 2 a.m. What? Like just waiting before Dude, just to get the newest that's drop. super yeah. cool. So then we had like the Somerset one, there was like 163 people like in line. So building the community, I think, was was the biggest challenge, but I think we've, we've sort of yeah. done that well. Like we always strive heavily, heavily, heavily on experience. Like that's smart. From the second they order something on the website to what they feel and when they receive the product to um, what they feel like when they're wearing it, when somebody compliments them, it's all part of like the sauna experience. Yeah. That's really, really smart. I love experience marketing. So yeah. how do you feel like you create, I'm big on community too. Yeah. Um, how, how did you build that community in the beginning, just 16 months ago? So it started, I guess, with the packaging, right? Like I kind of, you know, I took everything I liked from my favorite brands, um, Kith, you know, Off-White, Fear of God, and just kind of like meshed everything together and kind of put our own spin on it. Yeah. So like all of our t-shirts, they come in this frosted bag for the experience. It's nice just feel like right when you open it up, it's this nice luxury type of feel. Yeah. The custom hang tags. Um, stuff falls out. Yeah, stuff falls out. There's a <laughs> sticker there. It's all part of, you know, when you open it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Apple effect, right? When you open up a, a brand new iPhone, it's like that whole suction thing that just, yeah. Cool. yeah. I'll have to open one of your items. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the point of it. And then we end up moving to pop-ups, like for the Somerset pop-up, we did this whole fake burger restaurant. Yeah. You walk so in. Cool. What? Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Describe, fake burger? A actually describe it. Try to try to explain it. Yeah, and, yeah. So that people can kind of visualize <laughs> it. It's, it's so, so cool. So we, you walk in and um, it just has a sauna logo on top. Um, menus and then burger logos a little like a burger stand 
them dressed up as like uh, fast food employees. Uh, you, you walk up, you look at the item on the top, you order it, you get a ticket number, and then you wait at the side. And then yeah. while we're scrambling in the back to pick everything, like pick your order, it comes out on a train, like a burger box. So cool. Out of, this, out of this short order window. Yeah, it's like a little hole in the wall. Just yeah. In. yeah, it comes out on the tray, and then it's like order 67, ready for pickup. And there's yeah. count the counters and the you know, just like you're at it's McDonald's. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I was gonna say, but it's like much healthier. <laughs> yeah, much, much healthier. Are you gonna do that again? Um, so actually, a little theme that we've had with every pop up has had food. Yeah. So that'd make me hungry. Right. Exactly. <laughs> at our one for the Tigers opening day, we did like sauna hot dogs, where every so single cool. hot dog was branded with like a sauna logo. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what this theme is. And our new one that we're actually doing on July 1st, it's a little bit more of like a teaser, but we're doing a Stranger Things drop. Oh, cool. And oh, we're wow. going to have like a whole ice cream stand that kind of... Where at? Uh, Birmingham 8. Birmingham, yeah. okay. Will there actually be ice cream? Yeah, okay. there'll be actually ice cream because in the show... You're going to be inside or outside? Inside. So okay. we're going to host this whole movie premiere for the Stranger Things final drop. And we're oh, gonna cool. Be, yeah. So that's that hasn't cool. been announced yet, but that's something a little more. So you're doing a Stranger Things... Yeah. Well, really. Yes. Things, things. So that's a, our first step kind of away from sports. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen success with teas like this as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just less sports and more kind of like yeah. just Detroit-esque uh, and like this one as well. This is like our vintage horror collection. These are Easy. both, yeah, this one hasn't been released or anything like that, but we just do, yeah. Even if it's you just... Start here first, ones. people. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. is so inspiring. Like, I think the reason that, you know, I really noticed your items is they're just so unique and, like, different. Like, how, how do you continue to create unique right. items? Right. It's... The one thing I want to first started, I wanted to do was... I didn't want to get stuck to one theme. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to just create whatever I wanted and see if it could sell. Like, anything that I thought was cool. Mm -hmm. These teas, these teas, yeah. and they all... Yeah, so to stay creative, I think... Uh, at times it can get tough, especially yeah. when you're working with other cities that like, you know, you don't have a true, true, true passion for. Mm. Um, it could get a little tough. Like, I'm not a huge baseball fan, so designing baseball pieces isn't the strong suit. It's but I think, we've, yeah, it's taken two to three months to design one piece versus wow. the Red Wings one where it's like, I know exactly how I want it to look. Oh, my gosh. Did yeah. you skate in the CHL? Yeah, so I, I played hockey all throughout college and uh, growing up, and then I play in the CHL currently right now. Well, if you look on the trophy, my name's on there twice. It's on there? Wait, you guys, have, you guys might know my brothers, oh. Justin and Travis Elias. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. say they're some of the best hockey players. <laughs> really? I love it. I oh, love boy. it. That's awesome. I love hockey. Do they skate in the CHL? Too. They played hockey for 20 years. I feel like awesome. one of them moved, so. Yeah. But one's like more. Miami real estate? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, That's awesome. But, um, okay, I'm just so inspired. Like, this is crazy. I, like... I know what it takes. I'm going to lose my new cold yeah. calls. That's it. <laughs> yeah. First episode. Yeah. You want to hire? Yeah, yeah right. Um, so, okay, tell me about your first, I know you mentioned before the show, like your first pop-up was like a major challenge. And yeah. I'd love to hear about that. And that, then I want to hear about your team. And I want to hear about like, are you the creative director? Like, what's your role? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure yeah. you wear a hundred hats. Like, I want to hear about kind of your staffing. I think the to touch on it first before we even get into that to kind of go for it is the is the team um, the whole pop up and everything couldn't have been done without the entire team you know we have right now we have four employees working on hiring our next uh, two right now we actually have the interview scheduled next week to hire a marketing associate so mm -hmm. that's kind of where we need the most help uh, to kind of work alongside me uh, I handle everything from the marketing the content creation and designing and like brand direction uh, Merrick who's honestly a wizard behind everything he does all of our public outreach and athlete outreach so he secures the deals yeah um, i was going to ask about that that's good. Yeah. that's that's kind of a huge piece very big yeah. piece yeah. he's he's very very good at what he does and mm -hmm. he's uh i don't think it gets enough credit cuz he's more behind the scenes what's his last Aww. name wine garden yeah wine garden. one of my Magic friends Bank. we grew up uh together kind of in high school played hockey together and it was yeah he's 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 a great kid hockey's a nice Fraternity. It brings everybody yeah. together. Yeah. It is. I wasn't allowed to play hockey. Yeah. I had to play soccer. They didn't want you to show them yeah. up. That's why. Well, my dad was like, I don't want you in the locker room. So. <laughs> Yeah. Good point. And, you know, Chris George, you guys are actually having him a little yeah. bit later. He's he's kind of like a mentor to me. So he's uh, one of the few guys who I can pick up the phone and ask any question to. Oh. Yeah, so he's he's been through it he's all. He's a phenomenal resource, really. Yeah. I mean, oh, we we, uh, we actually uh, contracted him for 99, the... Oh wow! Yeah, my yeah, core yeah. company, my core business, and uh, we would meet with him once a week and brainstorm, and he, yeah, he'd uh, put us on the right track. He's an awesome, awesome resource. Yeah, yeah. 
And then we have great Jacob. person too. I yeah, see. awesome <laughs> person. Yeah, he's yeah. just a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's definitely a character, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Then we have Jacob, who's our operations guy. He handles everything from the warehouse to kind of going back and forth. And then you know Matt Toma is our, our lead lawyer right now. So. Matt Toma, yeah. <laughs> lawyer. Yeah. So so Matt was taking his uh, I guess his finals here in the, in the office uh, in another area, uh, and uh, I walked in one day and I saw this whiteboard of a design and <laughs> sauna and all this stuff and why don't you explain what was that what what I was looking at because it, yeah. it, it was it was it was a like masterpiece a but I I didn't know how to yeah. sort through it sort of <laughs> but I did take pictures and I will be releasing those on uh, Reddit awesome. pretty soon awesome awesome <laughs> awesome yeah there um that was basically our tech pack for the mesh shorts um I kind of one of Matt's friends Mo we were just talking like all these mesh shorts on the market right now they're you know, they're $110 and they're very cheap quality. Wow. So we strive very heavy and sign like, I need the best quality t-shirt, I need the best quality this and that because like that. spending $120 on a t-shirt and you get like, um, you know, this falls apart. In, yeah, in the wash. In the wash and 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 <clears throat> exactly. Um, you were looking at a mesh short tech pack. So that's basically like everything from the nooks and cracks to it of how long the, the cord is gonna be mm -hmm. to how long this inseam has to be mm -hmm. to what material. To, to like even everything from how wide the aglet has to be like it's every little thing it, it, there's so much that goes into creating clothing that it's like even i um think i'm an amateur and i've been you know trying to research it for the past six to seven months yeah well, i mean that's amazing yeah. we had to ask where do you manufacture so we have actually three manufacturers we our main warehouse is in chicago nice. in commerce mark ajar from tv oh, yeah. store online oh. he's he's been, the best He's another guy actually involved with us, so oh, he's a, he's a great great asset, yeah, and a great guy. So he's, like, he knows the licensing game inside and yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So we have definitely a good team. Um, we cut so all in L.A. in nice. Portugal, so anything that we kind of do, it's Portugal, China, L.A. Yeah, but with everything nowadays, it's so hard to get everything overseas. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I love that most of it's made in the U.S. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah, we definitely great. take a more of the the hit on the prices, but the quality is yeah. just so much better here. Yeah. yeah. So what do you feel like you see for the next two years of sauna? Like, what is your vision? I want to, I really want to create an essential line. Like, I want to be the fashion brand of Detroit that kind of, yeah. you know, every state has a look, right? So, like, mm -hmm. all our major cities, like, L.A. look is more about, you know, hype beast fashion. And, you know, the Miami look is more, like, clean and elegant when you're going out. New York's high fashion. Paris is, like, even higher fashion, like, straight, you know, cut and sew um but detroit doesn't really have this like style like you're not wearing detroit style it does in a way i feel like this is detroit style yeah exactly <laughs> so it goes beyond graphics it goes more cut and sew that like what we grew up with like watching you know eminem and his his baggy pants like i want to create basically real fashion for detroit that's the long-term goal yeah yeah it makes I'm, me happy because i don't know if you know this but detroit was i think the fashion capital of the yeah, u.s right like, right what a hundred yeah something here it was actually awesome. the paris it was called like the paris of right, the right, west right. so i'm glad that you're reviving that i feel like you're one of the only brands <laughs> here so that does it, yeah it's great pioneering yeah to take it forward and there's a charitable component too to the to the brand right absolutely yeah so tell us about that We've worked with uh, multiple charities. Um, when we did the Miguel Cabrera job, we told him that 10% of his proceeds are gonna go to uh, his charity. So mm -hmm. he, he said all of it that you guys are gonna give me, send it to charity. Yeah. That's amazing. So we did that and we kind of go for that charity aspect that helps really kind of securing these athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, just giving back because I think a lot of brands miss uh, conceptualize like the idea of, of giving you know back to the community. I think mm -hmm. it's huge. Mm -hmm. So with Stafford's foundation, um, we did for their job, we donated 10% again to them, mm -hmm. Kate Cunningham's job. Um, so we always try to incorporate a, a charity aspect to it. And then we're doing like a charity event to like make blankets in the end of August. For, oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so that's going to be really cool. So that's we more. We need to make a Chaldean shirt. I know. Come on. We need to. We Where's need your to Assyrian do Chaldean line? <laughs> I know. I know. We got to We got to The market's there for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's um, collaborate. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, and I remember you mentioned the the pop-up as well like oh, the, yeah. for that um i like to hear about like the hell that entrepreneurs went through. yeah yeah i think that's <laughs> definitely a, uh, a lot of cool stories um there but basically we had the pop-up in december yeah. for the entire month but we only we got the go-ahead three weeks before so right in november so we had to plan 
three drops for every weekend in December, um, build a store and kind of get all the product ready. So three weeks before we get the go ahead, I have this idea of let's build a burger idea. Oh yeah. my um, gosh, you did that in three weeks? Three weeks, we had to oh build this gosh. entire store. So hand painted the store, hand built all the shelves, screwed everything in. The only thing that was like done was a carpenter came in the day before we opened, built the shelf or the counter, counter yeah. cut the hole in the wall and then yeah. painted everything. The, oh, the, the whole counter. What were the three drops? We did, the first weekend was Michigan, Michigan State. Oh, wow. So there was three designs each, three designs each, mm -hmm. probably like 500 products each weekend. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was Tigers and basketball. So anything basketball related, anything Tigers related. Um, the last one was new drop was the Megatron and then Chicago Bulls one. Nice. And then getting that last one was, if I tell you I have videos to show, whatever it is, there was, each time we did a drop, we were working literally till 8 a.m. Wow. And then I'd go to the store, set it up, and then 9 a.m., 10 a.m., no sleep. We're still just opening up. Everyone's there. Yeah, the last weekend, our printer got COVID, and I had to stuff the entire car. Your printer? Just, yeah. Oh so our warehouse here, I had to stuff the entire car, play uh, garments, and drive to Chicago that night, and come back that morning. Oh, Jesus. Fold, yeah. and then open up the store. I think it was literally 48 hours of <clears throat> no sleep. You took the garments to Chicago to get printed? Oh to print it. Uh, printed, you waited, and then you put them in the car and drove back. <laughs> yeah. True entrepreneurs. I had no no rear view, side view mirror <clears throat> on my right side, so I drove in the left lane the whole time. Couldn't oh see out of the God. back. Only one person could fit in the car. It was, yeah, it was a... Uh... <laughs> Labor of love. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes you successful. That's commitment right yeah. there. I want to highlight, too, because I <clears throat> just think how quickly you grew and the fact that you got celebrities and athletes, like... Let's talk about how you made that happen so yeah. quickly. So we always, it was honestly a little bit easier than people think it is. Um, if you have a great product, yes. people are going to want it. Mm -hmm. So when we send it to the athletes and say, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to send this? Yeah. Immediately they fall in love with kind of like the culture of the brand and like what they see in yeah. the product of the brand. Um, but, you know, Merrick, he's, he's, been, he's been great on our outreach, kind of like talking to all these athletes and sending it all. And then we get like, you know, these deals worked with them. Um, and honestly, just simple as, hey, can I make you a shirt or can I send you a shirt on Instagram is kind of like most of our outreach. Okay, so do you feel like social media is one of the reasons that you grew? Oh, yeah. I, we strictly have only started through social media. I yeah. think it, it's the most powerful tool for any brand. If you can really understand, like, just content creation, yeah. I think y you can build anything. Like, it, it's, it's a lot easier than people think, but it's also a challenge. So this is straight grassroots, right? Yeah. Okay. I think it's... it's <laughs> so you do shirts, you do sh now you do shorts. Yeah. You're gonna get into the shoe. The shoe game. We want to kind of create something <clears throat> similar to like a easy slide. Not obviously easy slide, but yeah. I have this idea of this like whole like skeleton bone shoe that we really want to oh, release, cool. like more of like an Air Force yeah. type of thing. But that's obviously more long term. Yeah. yeah. You gotta you, creating that's a little bit more uh, challenging, time consuming, and um, yeah. Yeah. So you so you're in. <clears throat> You've already done Somerset. What about the Oakland, like the Oakland Mall? Would you, would we, you entertain that? I would say Mario, um, what's, what's his name? Mario, Mario, Mario uh, Kizzi. Kizzi, yeah, that's yeah. what I Yeah, so he's he's approached a little bit. My sister actually used to work for, for him in Bowling Green at yeah. one of his stores. Oh, shit. And uh, he called out to reach out to her and said, kind of like, hey, let's put a store there and stuff like that. I'm, I'm open to anything. I'm always yeah. down to do it. Yeah. Um, it's he's a great guy to work time. with. Yeah. He really yeah. is. Very awesome. We've had him on the show. He's... he's he talked specifically about the Oakland and yeah. and his his aspirations there and his dreams and his vision, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, Very I, th cool I think see. I think that'd be a great collab. Yeah, really. yeah. And I grew up like going to Oakland Mall. You know, so yeah. I, I'm from uh, Sterling Heights is where I grew up originally. Then we kind of moved to Bloomfield in like sixth to seventh grade. Um, so seeing it like go to where it's now is is a little sad, but. I think it, it it's a great mall. Like the spot's kind of perfect. It's in the middle of everything. It is a good location. Yeah. I yeah. want to ask. You just made me think of something because I feel like um, doing something creative as a Chaldean. Like, what did you feel? I'm sure your parents wanted you to do something certain. Yeah. Also, how did you feel like releasing something like as like a Chaldean entrepreneur doing fashion? Like, I want to hear about that background. Like, did right, you feel right. any like hesitation or like nervousness? Yeah. Um. It, it's kind of a little bit different, I guess. 
I was never fully into the Chaldean community, especially like I know how there's like East and there's there's West yeah. and stuff, but yeah. You so were I, both. You were, yeah. You were confused. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I kind of call it the middle side, you know, like right where... You're neutral. The, yeah, exactly. So You're like, I love them all. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Like... Exactly. Exactly. But um, <clears throat> no, you, you're, you're right. Like, I think starting a business in any aspect, in any culture is hard because like people can get the wrong impression of this and that. But mm -hmm. one thing I can proudly say is I haven't had any negative... I like like support, yeah. That's it's great. every I single person, that. east and west, or Chaldean, <laughs> this south, and that. north. <laughs> yeah, every single person has been so supportive, and and like people have asked, like, oh, like people are gonna hate, like, right? Like, people are gonna hate. I swear, I haven't seen any haters. I think I the I think the haters are are scared to to show their faces or their yeah, heads or right, whatever because right, it right. caught fire so yeah. much, and yeah. you have so much support and so much love, and you're not the kind of guy that. Uh, rubbed it in anyone's face oh and, yeah that's that's you know, for sure you and always, when everybody yeah. and when everybody met you during the during the uh the uh, pop-up you were sleepwalking so was, <laughs> I, was, were, I didn't know if i said were, anything bad during the, during the pop-up or did oh anything but yeah i was fully fully sleepwalking crazy. actually there's a photo of me sleeping in a, literally a cardboard box i was oh, for like two hours i just took a nap while the store was a little bit slower and that's then, the detroit yeah. hustle i love though like i love hearing people like sleeping in their Cardboard and, boxes. and that's why they say like why do you what's the skeletons i think it just fits perfectly in the mold of detroit it's like that nitty gritty yeah, like, it really yeah. is where really that, that hard-working city i think that's kind badass of with it yeah i have to ask um so when we're starting a new business right like from what you thought on day one to now what are you most surprised by so dollar amounts have never got like right when i say like we could sell five dollars or 50 million dollars and it's just like that's never been like a value of how I value the business. Yeah. I think it's um, the coolest thing is kind of like seeing people enjoy something. Like if that kind of answers the question a little yeah. bit. But, yeah. um, what surprised you? Like that you, you know, obviously you had a vision of what this was going to be, but everything yeah. takes different turns. Right, right. It's it's more the sense of the, like people just enjoying it. Like when I see people lining up outside, that was like the first time. I, I literally to you. <laughs> I told you guys when I was there at 8 a.m. to set up the store and 9 a.m. came and we're open up in one hour. I walked outside, I was sweeping the store and I literally just like, <laughs> and there's like six people in line and I was like, wait, what? Like we don't open for another hour, guys. Like, oh, no, I want the, I want the new hoodie right, right. Was like, that was when i first like is that like a rush like the, yeah, the best eye. thing was like holy sure. shit yeah. that was like the only thing i could yeah. say at the time oh my god yeah it was ins that it was, was like, amazing was a there, was, there was a tons yeah. and tons of people there yeah. i ended up meeting your meeting your dad that day and uh she asked about you know the way the community or, or starting a business within the community mm -hmm. and your dad is such a cool cat like, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and right. he, he talked about he, he mentioned that your your house is the house that everybody hangs out at. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the the hangout house. So, it, his dad's such a cool dude that it was like probably that's where he gets probably his maybe like, yeah that's where he gets his <laughs> coolness for sure. And then it was probably so easy for him to be. It, it there wasn't like a scary road, you know, where you're yeah, putting this yeah. thing out and are people yeah. gonna it's you know respect point. the skeleton and that yeah. stuff because it's like you your 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 dad brought you up from what I saw exactly from yeah. what little I saw that that you were just a free spirit your dad's such a cool dude and Aww. accepting and, and that's where it came know, from yeah, yeah. your he, parents were supportive of you launching oh all, all the time yeah so my dad was the different kid right like he he started his own soccer store when yeah. when like you know when everybody came here and they were opening up this stores and this store. it's yeah. not that there's anything Liquor, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. soccer, soccer yeah. but he was he was just different you know like starting a soccer store everybody called him uh you know like like weird for it like what mm -hmm. are you doing like just like focus on this mm -hmm. and you know he built something great and they were always supportive wow. even since high school i was always growing and selling instagram accounts like i was just what? doing whatever i could to like kind of be on social media okay and kind of like make that as my business and i could very well just sit there and, and kind of like work with his his uh business and store yeah exactly but Stores. i always knew i <laughs> wanted to like i know it sounds kind of cheesy but the one thing i wanted to see from my dad was just like that I could do like what he did, yeah. and at the pop up, like he came up to me, and was like, "Yeah, like I'm proud of you for this." And that was like, no, that was like so the first cool. like emotional yeah, yeah. moment that I had like with that's my dad. Bad. I was like, "All right," because he's always that tough love. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. All like, our man. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. Kelly and dad. Exactly, <clears throat> but his for personality sure. is for oh, sure the reason kind of like where I am today, and got the mom's heart and my dad's personality. Yeah, so. I love that. That's, that's cool. So let's talk about your next 
pop-ups, your next launches, your um, when we're going to make a Chaldean shirt. Yeah, like, right. We absolutely. We more representation. Keeping up with the Chaldean shirts too as yeah. well. We should get one of those. Keep yeah. Up. Yeah. Um, okay. So sure. yeah, tell us all that. Your pop-ups and events and. So not to go too much into detail because we always like to keep the, the exclusiveness. We have the Stranger Things drop coming July 1st that we haven't even announced yet. Um, wow, July 1st. Yeah. Two so, weeks. And, you know, not not much is done for it yet, but, you know, we always work under the, <laughs> under the wire, especially. That's funny. Um, coming up in, in August, we're going to have a graphic tee collection like vintage horror and this and that. Um, a lot of really cool marketing for the... For the Stranger Things, it's going to be more of like a short film, a three-part teaser. Are you guys so, partnering with them as a Not brand? fully. Okay. Yeah, not fully. But we have actually a few of the the cast members mm -hmm. that are going to be posting a little about it. Right. That, yeah, oh so that, that will be. 11? No, that, that one I can say. No, that one's a little bit too hard to get, but um, uh, maybe. I love that. <laughs> uh, so wait, are you allowed to like legally like licensing? Like, are you allowed to use... Like the trademarks and stuff? Yeah. yeah so... It, it's a very touchy subject um, when it comes to these teams. It's definitely a process. Obtaining the full licensing is a little bit harder nowadays with mm -hmm. Fanatics and all these other companies. But um, when you work directly with a player, you're allowed to have their likeness. And we don't use any trademarks. So for the like the Miguel Cabrera one, it had the most eyes on it. So we had to make sure that it was either approved by their teams and yeah. approved by the, the MLB. Mm -hmm. So... We just use simple words like Detroit okay. and kind of, you know, it's, it is what it is. You like make you your own it. version. So exactly. it's like not, yeah. so with Stranger Things, you're just going to make your own version of Stranger Things. Yeah. Okay. Stranger Things is going to be a little bit different. Um, it, it, it's going to be more like a sauna, sauna thing type of thing. Yeah. So it's going to okay. be more sauna fight. Sauna things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something, uh, <laughs> something a little bit more, but coming towards that sports season in October, is going to be really where we kind of like hit the, go full gear. Um, we're going to be doing like an original six drop for hockey. So cool. We have five NFL players, some big name guys lined up for one collection. Mm -hmm. yeah. World Cup is coming. So I, we just announced that actually in our Discord the other day. Um, You're a busy and, guy. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be definitely <laughs> fun designing all these pieces because each one we're going to finally stem away from just one design. It's going to be collections. So okay. like, yeah, three designs at once. So the whole surge in the NFT game, it, you being like the artist, right, <laughs> the right, graphics yeah. guy. Right. Have you have you dabbled at all in that? We have a little bit. We've thought about it, um, but right now, especially with the market and where it's in, yeah, it's, it's a little tough it's to kind of get into. But I don't really like doing anything unless I fully understand something, mm -hmm. unless I fully give a hundred percent to it. Yeah. So like, I didn't feel like we could have gave like a great utility right off the bat. Like a lot yeah, of these that's... NFT companies, they just release cool art, Off sell his name, and yeah, and, done, and yeah. dies out. But we really want to do things like in the future early access to this, uh, exclusive access to like a uh, watch party, like stuff like that. Yeah. So if it does get to the point where we get back to the NFT With game, the traction, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just thought of like two questions. So I know that you mostly sell online, but do you have any where someone could just go buy your items in store? So nothing that we like to keep this exclusiveness because one, it's hard to stock everything yeah. and we want to release more designs and two, it kind of builds this culture that we have with people lining up. So if it's there, it's there. If it's not, you won't get it again. Okay. Um, but another place to buy it is like, you know, we've seen on like eBay, the Red Wings design we saw sold for like $450. What? Yeah. And that, that released, the first I released like $58 already. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. You know what? Yeah, you created a hustle for somebody else. Yeah, That's right. pretty cool. Exactly. I like that too. Um, you know, just like hearing about your story and like your success, I feel like part of the reason you're extra successful is men don't have that many options, and like you're also tying it in with sports and like different you things know. that men like. So I feel like as women, we have like thousands of options. Yeah, we're just, but like a Detroit yeah. guy like doesn't have so many different like fashionable, unique. Exactly. Items. So I feel like you are filling that need. So that's where it stems from. I've never like I always love repping, you know, Detroit. Like too many cities rep LA, they rep Miami, yeah. they rep Chicago, they rep yeah. New York. Uh you see the the NY hat more than you see a, a Detroit D hat. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's like the goal is to bring this culture everywhere else. And now people are finally repping Detroit in a cool way. Like yeah. that's that was the whole point of it. Yeah, that's funny you yeah. say that because I lived in San Diego and when I would see someone with Detroit, I would like run to yeah, them. Yeah, like, right? yes. yeah. like someone from Michigan, thank you. Now that's the culture that we yeah. send all these athletes and you have athletes who are on, you know, like 
Seattle Seahawks wearing a, a Detroit Red Wings T-shirt. Yeah, you know that's and that just it's builds the, the whole culture. It's great to see. I, yeah. Anytime I go on vacation, I pack three hats. They're all yeah, it's the right. D, it's the uh, Bad Boys hat, and the another hat from what, someone from the show. Yeah, yeah. And I wrap sure. it all the time, and I yeah I take photos with them in the background, and I send them to them, and yeah, you know, like, it's awesome. Man. It, it'll it be really on is. Fifth and Ocean, and I snap the <laughs> Henry Electric hat. And you show it to them, right? Yeah. No, I think Detroit has like a really cool edge. Even just seeing your shirt, I don't have one, sadly. No. But um, <laughs> we'll change maybe that. I'll we'll get one. one. Yeah. Um, and then, so what else we want to ask him? Well, usually we uh, close out every single show with, uh, "What does it mean to you to be Chaldean?" It's a good question. I think what it means to me is, um, you know, being Chaldean, especially today. It's it's kind of like a. It's your own specific culture. I think nobody really understands outside of being Chaldean, like what yep. really being Chaldean is and how close we all are together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, there's families that you talk to that don't really talk to their other, you know, family to sat, but you talk to a Chaldean person. And, you know, my third cousin is my <laughs> right. best friend. Yeah. Right. My second cousin. <clears throat> and we, a lot of like the success we had with Sana was because we had a guy for everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the Chaldean community is so True. close. So 100%. we need a painter. I know exactly who to call. We yeah. need, I need a sign made in, in 24 hours. Yeah. I know exactly who to call. Yeah. I need hangers in 24 hours with logos on them. I know exactly who to call. So wow. being Chaldean, it just means like community. I think yeah. to me. Yeah. No I doubt. love that you use like um, people in our community for your business. Oh yeah. Every, <laughs> a lot of what we did was community, especially like workers. We always yeah. looked like the Chaldean people. That's awesome. Um, and it's just, it's, Definitely a fun process. Yeah. Beautiful. I truly, truly enjoy it. Cool. Well, thanks Amazing. for joining us. Thank you, guys. Uh, great job, Esty. Thank first you. time. My first Very interview. Nice. There you go. I'll always remember it. <laughs> Did an awesome job. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and uh, pick up uh, Sana. Where, where can yeah. they actually go to get this stuff? Yeah. So right now, our site is closed. We usually launch once a month typically okay. yeah online um so you can follow us on instagram at sauna detroit uh twitter sauna detroit and we also have a discord for early access that we drop so you don't miss out Amazing. thank you awesome signing off Bye, guys. <laughs>